I'm going to go straight into Luke chapter 5. One of those days as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed. And they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof. And they let him down with his bed through the tiles in the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to question him, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say rise and walk? But that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And immediately he rose up before them and he picked up what he had been lying on and he went home glorifying God. And amazement seized them all. Amazement seized them all. And they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen extraordinary things today. Amen. Jesus. May we, may we see extraordinary things today. May we be amazed, may we be seized in amazement by your glory and your wonder and your awe and your presence. Lord, increase our capacity, increase our hunger for you, that we would just be hungry for the more of you, Lord. That you would break through and break in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give us some tissues, please. I think faith is never something to be uh, just talked about, Amen. It's something to be lived out. If you don't live it, you don't believe it. So often is the phrase. If anyone's wondering, that's just the Holy Spirit up here in Jesus' name. Today I want to speak on hunger. <laughs> and I hope I get through it. <laughs> You have four friends, four friends who have their friend on a bed and they need him to get to Jesus. And the room is full and they can't get in. And they are just desperate, amen? They are just desperate that they would climb to the top and they would claw their way through the tiles and the clay and the straw. They are desperate to get to Jesus because the place says it is full. There's no space. You can't get in. Just for a second, let's stop. Let's close our eyes. And let's picture this place. Absolutely full. Absolutely packed. You can't get in the door. You can't get in the parking lot. The cemetery parking lot. This rope. This place is full. And you come and you come with your car. And you walk in. And you think, Nah. Next week. Or do you park? You stop. You stop traffic. You get out. You claw your way. You come in because God's doing something. We've had multiple words of prophecy, pictures about this place being over. And it starts in places like this today. Where we just come with a hunger for the more of Jesus. We're like, Jesus, would you manifest in this room? And these, these friends have got their friend, and they're like, we're not leaving until we get a touch of Jesus, amen? We're not leaving until he gets up and he walks. 
There is desperation and there is hunger. And it's a beautiful picture of desperation. And it's a, it's a, it's a hunger and a desperation I'm desperate to have. How about you? That we would break in and we would claw through the clay, through the straw, through the towel, through the muck, through the busyness, through the difficulties. But we're like, Jesus, all we want is a touch of you. Can't even get in. They could have, they could have just gone home. They could have just turned up and gone home. Didn't, it didn't suit them. The inconvenience didn't suit them. They could have just given up. They could have just said, I'm destined to live like this forever. Could have just given up. Could have, could have just waited. The other thought, could have just waited until everything was over. And everyone had left and Jesus was available. But it's a picture of them saying, hey, no, Jesus is doing something there and then in that moment and I want it. I want it. I'm not going to wait till it's over. I'm not going to wait till it passes. I want it now. Desperately hungering to get to the top of the roof. And there's two kinds of desperations, friends. There's two kinds of desperations, two kinds of hungers. And one is, one leads us to frustration. One leads us to anger, bitterness, unbelief. And the other one leads us to God. Amen. It's your choice where your desperation and your hunger lead you. You can hunger after something else and go after that, or you can hunger for the more of Him. And the six, Matthew 6.33, that says, Seek Him first and His righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. One leads you to God. One leads you away from God. One leads you to surrender. The other one leads you to take over your life. Where's your desperation? Your outcome determines how, your response determines what your outcome is going to be. And we see those two different responses here in this passage. In Luke chapter 5, you see the Pharisees who are hungry to catch him out. <laughs> hungry to make a mistake. Hungry to say that pastor did that. Hungry to say that rabbi did that. Hungry with suspicion. Or you've got friends who are hungry to encounter him to be authentic and real and to go after what is he truly doing? What's completely shaped and messed up my view of the historical perspective and theology I have of Jesus in the Bible? What's he doing that's going to mess that up? But something's happening because Jesus is in the room and crowds are gathering. God's doing something. Where's your hunger going to lead you to? It can lead you to encounter him or it can lead you to run from him. One leads you to hostility and anger, and the other to surrender. Remember the guy with the talent? The owner goes away and he gives him some money and he says, come back, and when I come back, I want to see what you can give me back, and the one guy gives him so much, the other one gives him a little bit more, and the third guy says, I knew you were a wicked and angry man, so I hit it, but I'm giving it back to you. And the owner's like, but you could have at least got me interest. And two, we've got two scenarios there. We've got one guy who's running from God and the other one's running towards. One from the owner, the other one towards. That's what hunger leads us to. Run one's away, the other one runs to. And in the natural, has there been any, anything in your life that you have been so desperate for, that you've gone after, that you've wanted, Maybe it's, 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 it's a financial thing. Maybe it was a job. Maybe it, 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 it was something you just wanted in life. But you saved and you worked. Maybe you went to college and you worked every single hour so you could pay for your tuition. There was a desperation and a hunger that you went after. Wouldn't that be incredible if that same hunger is transferred into our passion and love for going after the more of Jesus? Amen. We put that much intensity that we do for things in the natural into the spiritual. That there are priorities. That we will sacrifice our 12 o'clock, our 1 o'clock, our 2 a.m. going to beds. We will sacrifice the five series that we're watching. I'm not saying that's bad. Trust me, I love my series on Netflix. 
But we are willing to sacrifice it. We are willing to sacrifice our alcoholic addiction. We are willing to sacrifice our gaming addiction. Because we've gone after the things that matter, the things of the kingdom, because there's a desperation that none of those things can satisfy, that only Him can satisfy. Amen? How bad do you want it? How bad do we want revival? We love speaking about revival, don't we? Hey, we want revival. Revival's great. But how badly are we all going to pay the price and go after revival? Is it, is it going to be something we're just going to relegate to the leaders? That's it? We're just going to do it? Or we're all going to and say, you know what? We actually, we are hungry for the city to be saved. Amen? We are hungry for the city that we live in. We cannot wait and we long and we hunger for the day when this looks like the house that Jesus was in right now where everyone's gathered and no one can get in. I hunger and I long for that day from my city. Why? Because Jesus loves this city, amen? He loves this valley. And there's a moment, yeah, there's a moment where Jesus actually shocks the crowd and the Pharisees get full marks actually for perceiving the theological implication and the, th- and the claim that Jesus is making. Credit to them. They get this right. They're like, whoa, something happened. Something shifted. There was a momentary shift, yeah. He made a claim. And they pick it up. They just they understand just how great his claim is. Why? Because only God can for- forgive sins. Only God can do that. What's he just done? I am God. He's proclaiming his authority in this moment. And he's releasing them from sin because their understanding would have been that the sin is from the parents. The, the parents messed up and they've passed the sin down to the child. He's not only forgiving the child, he's healing the child, but he's forgiving the sins of the parents. And it's a <gasps> moment. It's that whatever show you watch, Dancing with the Stars, that <gasps> I didn't see that coming. It's way more significant, amen. It's like, oh, <gasps> moment. Like, what did he just say? What did he say? I can't believe he just said that. And in that moment, he releases a revelation of his divinity. He, re- he releases a revelation of his authority, of who he is, his majesty. All because, why? All because he responded to five people who were hungry. All of that happened. Not because it was the right time. Because he responded to hunger. He responded to a moment of hunger. He was moved, it said, when he saw their faith. The hunger of the bleeding woman in Luke chapter 8. There's a crowd around Jesus. I'm going to go there if you don't know the story. There's a crowd around Jesus and he's walking and a woman is so desperate. She's been bleeding for 12 years. 12 years? 12 years. And there's a crowd around Jesus and everyone's pushing up against Jesus. This is not like, oh, there's Jesus. Tag, I'm healed. There's a crowd around Jesus. It's a battle to get in. It's like whatever the most incredible place you've been to. New Year's Eve, Times Square, Mattis, whatever that place is called. Ball drop place. Everyone's there. Everyone's there. You can't move. It's crowded. And it's weaving your way in, desperate, seeing Jesus through the crowd, seeing his head bopping, clawing, and touching his cloak. If I can just, if I can just get a touch of that cloak. And the woman gets a touch. And instantly, it says Jesus felt power drained from his body. There was a desperation that gets rewarded. There's a hunger that got rewarded. And in the story, there's a hunger that gets rewarded. But it releases much more. It releases a releasing of his whole divinity. An authority statement about he being God. It releases to the Pharisees and the experts saying, Oh, what just happened? All because hunger was rewarded. Amen? When the world sees Jesus respond to our hunger, it's going to be an ah moment. It's going to be an aha moment. It's going to be an attention moment. Because friends, in the natural, in the natural, we get hungry when we don't eat. Right? When we don't eat, we get hungry. If you fast all day, by 6 o'clock, you're starving. You want to eat. But in the spiritual, it's the other way around. You get hungry by eating. The more you eat, the more hungry you get in the spiritual. That's the opposite. The more you eat of Jesus, the more he tastes good. Amen. 
There's a melting pot. There's an infusion of things throwing in. And that's just been moved around and tweaked and stirred up for your goodness. Because in the kingdom, we become lazy when we're not absorbing Him. We get fatigued when we're not absorbing Him. But when we fill ourselves with what He said... When we read the miracles, when we read his testimony, when we read his truth, and we let it provoke us, we start getting hungry. And we start aligning with what he wants from us. Amen? Joel 2.28, he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Not just some flesh, all flesh. But there's a, there's a hunger that needs to partner with his. Virginia prayed this morning about alignment. There's a hunger that we go after that needs to align with what he wants to pour out over us. We need to be stewards of that. In the natural, if I go to Panda Express, one of my favorite things there is teriyaki chicken. I love teriyaki chicken. If I eat teriyaki chicken, I want more teriyaki chicken the next day. I don't go to Panda and have teriyaki chicken and think, oh my gosh, that was amazing. I don't need it for three more months. No. I'm like, that was so good. I want to go back and have it tomorrow. Why Panda? Why chicken, teriyaki chicken? I don't know. It's how I'm wired. When I go to market and I have filet mignon, I don't go to market and filet mignon and say, oh my gosh, that satisfied me. I'm going to come again this time next year. I'm like, I want to come back next week. And I want more. I want more. Why? Because this tastes so good. When you're here on a Wednesday night at Soaking, you want more. You're like, Sean, don't stop at 8. Go to 10. I want more. Jesus is in the room and I'm eating. This morning, a guitar string can break and it can throw everything off. But because there's anointing and there's a hunger on two people who want to go after the presence of the Spirit, they release something in this room because God's responding to their hunger. Amen? And then we as a church, as a people, we get filled with the authority and the hunger and the presence of God. And we feel the intimacy of God in the room. Amen? Why? Because some people hungered for it and God responds to their hunger. And it doesn't matter what happens with instruments. Because there's a heart to go after the more. And God rewards the hungry. He rewards the hungry. When I get up and I can't preach because he's not. He rewards the hungry. I don't care if I cry through this whole message. And I don't care what you think of me. Because I'm going after the most important thing. And that's the hungry in the presence of God. And as a church, that's what we want. As a city, that's what we want. Amen. Hunger is a sign of spiritual health. Hunger is a sign of spiritual health. In the natural, when a toddler does not want to eat food, what's wrong? There's a problem. They're sick. When they don't want to eat, there's a problem. They're sick. In the spiritual, hunger is a sign of spiritual health. When you're not hungry, when you're not hungry, there's a disconnect. Something's wrong. There's a problem. Hunger keeps us dependent on him like a toddler, dependent on his parents to feed him. We're dependent on Papa to feed us, amen? If you've lost your hunger, you've lost your dream, then read hungry for a word from him. Read hungry, get a word, get around Papa, get in the presence, get in worship. That incredible word from Sean about about, about, um, um, presence, thank you. What a, what a wow word, right? What an incredible word. We get read present for Him. Celebrate His presence. Get hungry for Him. Worship. Get on your face. If you're like, I don't know how to do it, just get on your face. How do you think we learned? <laughs> Pick up a book, whatever it is you strike. Buy a book, get a book that helps, that, that's going to enable. Come and speak to us. We say it all the time. Phone us, call us, speak to us. Read hungry, worship him. I want to read you Deuteronomy verse 8, verse 3. It says this He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna. Do you know what manna means? What is it? What is it? Manna means what is it? He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with what is it? Which neither you or your senders had known. So what is it? We still don't know. Even then later. To teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Ever had difficulties in your life where you can't explain? Lord, why is this happening? Lord, what is it? Lord, what is this? Lord's like, hey, I'm going to give you more of what is it. 
Here's the manna. You want answer and you're like, Lord, I don't know what's going on. And he's like, hey, here's more of it. Here's what is it. What is it, Lord? I don't know, but I have more. And we're like, explain this to me. Tell me what's going on, Lord. And he's like, no, I'm going to keep it a mystery. The Lord's fun like that, isn't he? He's like, no, I'm going to keep it a mystery. Why would you keep it a mystery? Because he wants to see if we can get to the end of the result and actually trust him with what is it. With what is it, what it is. Can we trust him? He's more important at the end result. If, if we will trust him with that. Why? Do you know why? Because it's going to lead you to a greater understanding. And it's going to lead you to a greater revelation than what you're actually asking for to be answered. So to get the answer is going to be more detrimental than getting to the end point where you can actually understand him. And it's going to be more important than what you're actually asking for. Friends, hunger is a gift from the Lord. Hunger is a gift. Desperation is a gift from the Lord. And it is essential. It is essential for your next season. And it is essential for every season of your life. Amen? We encourage you, hunger for more. Go after the more of God, the increase. Psalm 107, verse 33 to 36. I want to read this to you. Psalm 107, he turns rivers into a desert. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the evil of its inhabitants. Verse 36, though. And there, wait for it, and there he lets the hungry dwell. And they establish a city to live in. There he lets the hungry dwell. Why does he let the hungry dwell in it? Because he wants people who share his DNA to go and change his city. He wants people who are hungry to deposit the kingdom of heaven values into a city. He sends the hungry into the city to go and fortify it with the presence of heaven. I want to I ask you, is that what you feel this morning? Is that what you have for the city? Jesus loves St. Helena, you know that? He loves the Napa Valley. And I find it fascinating that we have two missionary families from South Africa in the heart of the city who are hungry to see the glory of God come. And he sends us into a city for the hungry will occupy it, for the hungry will dwell in it. And we're here simply to be a dwelling place for His presence. And we can't hunger alone. God is looking to release favor and He is looking to release influence to those who are hungry because why? They will know what to do with it. They will know how to deposit it into a city, into a school, into a college, into a business, into a kingdom. They will know what to do with it. Because why? They will impact cities. One man, one man got healed. And what did it say? It glorified God. And then what it said? It said all were amazed and glorified at God. In other words, one thing happens and a whole city is on fire. Amen? What are you hungering for? What are you hungering for? What are you desperate for? I had so much other stuff I want to say, but that's all I feel like the Lord wants me to release this morning. Just a precursor to hunger. A precursor to desperation. 
if my kid was in a hospital, I've been there plenty of times, a couple of times. Some of us have been there. If our kid was in a hospital, how desperate would be would we be to get them the care that they need? Right? We'd go to the ends of the earth, right? We'd die for them. How hungry are we? Can we take that same tenacity and see that's what Father God feels for us when He sent His Son, Jesus, to die on a cross? So He's like, man, I will do anything to see you saved. So I'm just going to go and get nailed to a cross to bear the sin of the world, to bear your sin, and to bring you eternal life, to bring you freedom, to bring you goodness, to bring you glory, and so that you can rise and stand with me one day in heaven. Amen? If we were a football team as a church and we were 0 and 20 for the last five seasons and we kept playing the same play over and over and over again every minute of every quarter, what's going to change? Nothing. We're going to have to change the playbook. I'm encouraging you this morning to take a look at your life playbook and see what's not changing. What is it that you need to change? What is it that you need to go after and say, Lord, I need to make this a priority? And Sean said, make the thing you need your song. All I prayed for is for, Lord, give me the wisdom to lead my family the way you want me to. Give me the wisdom to lead my family the way you want me to. What is the need? Turn your need into your song. Get hungry for the presence of God to come upon a couple people and then get around them and then catch the fire and go and let the whole city erupt in flame for the glory of God. Amen? Why don't we pray? Because I, don't know, I might need Sean's help. Yeah. We need to do announcements because we've got some very exciting things and we're going to, need to do an offering. But I actually just want to pray first and, and just get God just to... I don't know if, if any of this resonated with you. If I've been all over the place, and then, then I apologize. I just felt like we just needed to go into what hunger is because we are just hungering for His presence. So why don't we just pray where we are. If you need to kneel or if you need to lie down, do whatever you need to do. Get, change your posture. So often we need to just change our posture to encounter who He is. Amen? Let's just pray. Father God, I thank you for what happened today. I thank you that you poured out, Lord, that we were thirsty. We were thirsty and you poured out, Lord. You gave us more than a drink. Lord, we have a tap that's constantly flowing. How much we want is up to us. But Lord, I release an anointing for hunger in this place. I release a spirit of hunger, spiritual hunger to go after everything that you have for us, Lord Jesus. Lord, that we would see a city on fire. Why? Because the hungry will dwell in it, Lord. We're not going to see change if the hungry aren't prepared. If there are no hungry people to go in and transform a city, Lord. Lord Jesus, I just pray every single one of us, Lord, right now. Get wrecked in the next week with the power of heaven. Lord, if we truly trust you and we truly believe in your name and that you have the Romans 8.28 promise that all things work for good for those who love you. Lord, if we truly believe that, we can just open our hands and say, Lord, we surrender our lives to you right now. We surrender everything, our coming and our going. Our north, our south, our east and west, our left and right, whatever it is, we surrender to you, Lord. There's no other authority that we want to be under other than yours. We want to be under heaven's authority right now, Lord. Lord Jesus, whatever has been happening today, don't let it stop when we walk out these doors. Fill us, saturate us. 
cause us to shift boulders in the river, mountains, Lord, that need to be shifted so that we can receive the flow from heaven. Because, Lord, we're not here for our glory. We're here for your glory. May our homes look like heaven, Lord Jesus. May our parenting look like heaven, Jesus. May our friendships look like heaven, Jesus. May our businesses look like heaven, Jesus. May our schools look like heaven, Jesus. Lord, may our lives look like heaven. Teach us what that even means. But Lord, we can't do any of this without you. Nor do I even want to try. (laughs) Creating us a hunger. Creating us a hunger. That Lord, we are not satisfied with 15 minutes in the morning. And if we didn't hear from you, that's okay. No, Lord, create a hunger. Like, Lord, I want to know you. I am going to go to the top of the roof and I'm going to claw through tiles and I'm going to claw through straw and I'm going to claw through clay because I don't want to wait till what you've done is over to come. I want to come to you now, Lord Jesus. Create that hunger that we will not be satisfied with anything less than an encounter with you, Lord Jesus. If that's you, would you just put your hand up this morning? Just raise your hand. Eyes are closed. Don't look around. Just raise your hand. (laughs) Lord Jesus, you've seen our surrender. You've seen our hearts, Lord Jesus. These are true statements of need, of hunger, and of desperation, Jesus. I pray that they don't walk away thinking today was nice. I pray they walk away feeling challenged that you are calling them to more. That you have more for them, Lord. Again, I release the spirit of hunger. That you would come and satisfy the desires and the longings of their heart for the more of you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, we are going to do the offering. So please don't leave because Sean has some big announcements that he wants to give. Um, but um, Connie's going to come around with the offering basket. You can also give with the card machine at the back, and you can give by Venmo and PayPal to Encounter Church Napa. So search for Encounter Church Napa, please. And, um, and you can give on our website or on our app. If you download our app, Encounter Church Napa, you can give that way. Um, so do please, we're going to come around with the offering, and then Sean's going to do some announcements for us. So Do please hang around just a little bit longer before we go for tea and coffee. Thanks, Rich. Can we give him a clap? Let's honor him. (laughs) 